Hi, I'm Nif, and today I'm going to be bringing you a, um, a talk on one of the heroes of faith, and this is Paul, who I saw as a persistent apostle. So who was Paul? Paul was a Jew from the tribe of Benjamin, and he was once re originally referred to as Saul of Tarsus before his life-changing encounter with Jesus, who appeared to him through a light from heaven. So Saul, who, before, he came, before he became Paul, was a zealous, very religious scholar of the Jewish laws. And he felt like he knew everything about God, but he had no faith and forced the law upon others. And the truth of Jesus Christ was not in his heart, but he didn't believe. And he persecuted the early Christians. He, ob the, he observed the rituals of the law while his soul was unreformed. He was a hypocrite to his core. In Acts 9, Jesus reveals himself to Paul on his way to Damascus. He was so oblivious to Jesus' presence that he even asks who is speaking to him. So I'm going to read Acts 9 from verse 1 to 9. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for the letters of the synagogues to Damascus, so that if he found anyone who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? asked Saul. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The men travelling with Saul stood there speechless. They had not heard the sound nor did see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by hand to Damascus. For three days he was blind and he did not eat or drink anything. I love that and how Jesus reacted and responded when he was speaking to Paul because Jesus doesn't condemn him for persecuting the Christians. He doesn't have a go at him, he doesn't shout at him. He just tells Paul what he needs to do, go to Damascus and he will be met with help. And Jesus just gave him guidance and that's just so kind of Jesus not to condemn him or damn him in any way. And just, Jesus was so um, patient with him throughout this time that he was going through. The men accompanying him, accompanying him did not see Jesus because this was Paul's personal encounter. And now I'm gonna read from verse 10 to verse 19. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias, yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man of t from Tarsus named Paul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands to him and restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and how what he has done to harm your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with the authority of the chief priests to arrest all who call upon the name of Jesus. But the Lord has said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim the name of my name to the Gentiles and the kings and to all the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus Christ, who appeared to you on the road to Damascus as you were coming here, has sent me that you may see again and that you may be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up, was baptised, and after regaining, after eating some food, he regained his strength. That is just so amazing because it just shows how God uses man for man in this situation, for Paul's circumstance, and he uses someone who humbled himself, Ananias, to God's instruction, even though it was to go and meet a man who had killed Christians. Like, would you go and meet someone who was gonna kill you just because you're a Christian? Like, that is so scary. And like, it's just something for us to think about, like how far are we willing to go to fulfill God's destiny in our lives? So Paul's faith is immediately tried with his blindness phase, his phase of blindness, which is just a foretaste of the suffering that he receives in his story. But he does not complain about the suffering because he says that it's all for the glory of God. God chooses people who we might not think are adequate to serve him 
or are too unclean or are so unholy or that have a really bad, wretched past. No matter who you are, this is not true and God can use you in any way that he chooses and sees fit for the purposes that he has for his children. And as soon as Paul's trial was over, he dedicated his life by becoming baptised and accepting Jesus as his personal saviour and becomes reborn in Christ, becoming a purposeful, purposeful new creature. The old, soul, the old soul is gone and the new Paul is here. So from here on out, verse 19 up to 31, Paul instantly wants to plug himself into the church, the new church that is set up by Peter, who was instructed to by Jesus, and he wants to plug himself into the ministry of, gospel, of the gospel. But because he was once a Christian killer, many believers are skeptical of his conversion, even the disciples. But he is Jesus-driven and focused on spreading the gospel, preaching fearlessly and almost gets killed because of Jesus. As a result of Paul's obedience to, and the disciples' obedience to the Great Commission, it was able to manifest itself in the places that Jesus mentioned it first, Judea and Samaria. So this is taken from Acts 1 verse 8, which says that the, the Spirit of God will come upon the disciples and they will be able to preach in Judea and Samaria and onto the ends of the earth. And this is so amazing because Jesus was prophesying to them about what they would do even before they had done it or even before Paul had committed himself to the work of Christ because Jesus already knew that they were going to start and it was just so amazing how it's the obedience that they had to the will of God that was that enables the prophecy to become fulfilled and through God's grace mercy and kindness towards Paul Paul is now called in this story to preach to the Gentiles who are non-Jews like I'm a Nigerian and I'm not a Jew so if you're anything but Jewish then you're a Gentile yeah and he embarked on many missions to preach across countries such as Cyprus, Greece, Turkey and Syria. He wore many, he wrote many books to churches that he set up in the provinces where he preached. Some of my favourite of his books are Galatians, Philippians and Corinthians. And there are just a few verses like Galatians 2.19 which I just love so much because it really just speaks to me and it is just so amazing. Galatians 2.19 it says for, the, for through the law, I died to the law, so you might live for God. And I have been crucified with Christ, and no longer I that lives, but Christ lives in me. For the life I live now in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So this is Paul saying that he lives his life according to how Jesus wants to live, because it's no longer him that's living for himself, but it's the power of Christ through the Holy Spirit that is living and active and living in him. And that is just so amazing because it encourages me that even though I, I will not have the strength to do all the things that God asked me to do without the help of the Holy Spirit. So if I can rely on the Holy Spirit to help me, then I'll be able to do it and I'll be able to live a life that pleases God. And I'll take one from Philippians, which is just just another great verse because... I, it's just I, it's the inspiration of God upon his life really and there's a lot if you just read through the books like there's a lot that you can learn from him and his struggles and the way he lives his life to please God and not to please men so Philippians 4.13 it says that I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength and this just is another verse that encourages us that even though he was imprisoned for preaching the gospel he was living a hard life and a tough life in prison shackled but he saw it as him being a bond servant of Christ he chained himself purposely and willingly to the cause of Christ which was to spread the gospel to every living creature and proclaim the name of Jesus and I'll just um, take another one from Philippians because there's just so much you can learn and I'll just take it from Philippians 1 um, verse 21 and it says for to me to live in Christ and to die is gain. This shows that life in Christ is better than anything that we could possibly have. And like dying in Christ is the best way to die because we're dying to our sin, we're dying to everything that God was not approved was not approving of and we're living in Christ. So if we, we know that if we die we have the closure and we have the faith and we can believe that God is with us and we will meet with him once again and be reconciled.
reconciled with our Heavenly Father. Thank you so much for listening and God bless you. Amen.